Hello again and welcome to Living Faith Baptist Church online service. Uh, today we continue with our series on the Purpose Driven Life. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, number one, if you hear thunder, uh, we're taping this on Sunday morning and it's an incredible amount of rain. So if you're going to be tuning in on the online service, at least you'll be, be dry. But we will be having our in-person service uh, at 11 o'clock this morning. And so uh, looking forward to that. A couple other really neat announcements. Uh, we have two baptisms scheduled uh, for today. Uh, which is really exciting for uh, our church family here at Living Faith. No shortage of water to uh, baptize those folks in today, uh, but we are certainly looking forward to that and uh, just praising God for that for that happening here in our church family. Uh, you know, we've been, uh, as a part of this, uh, going back and kind of retracing our steps in the Purpose Driven Life for a few weeks now. And, and, and this is one of those uh, messages that I've probably talked about more than any of the other purposes. Uh, because it really has to do with, with your involvement here at, and as a part of our church family. And, and the second purpose is that you were formed for God's family. A great passage of scripture that kind of refers to that is uh, John chapter 15 and verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, God wants a family. And he created you to be a part of that family. You know, I could, I could probably just hit the pause button on our, on our message right here at this point because that's a spiritual truth that for so many people is powerful and life-changing. Before the COVID-19 uh, global pandemic, that we, live in, we just live in a time where people are becoming very uh, isolated. And, and people that don't have, that are not connected to a church family, when we begin to engage with those folks, when, when they, we see new families coming, we see new people coming to Living Faith, we realize that, that they're searching for something. And obviously, when you're separated from God, you're searching for Him. Uh, there's, God created you for a relationship with Him. And if you don't have an active relationship with God the Father, there's that God-shaped void uh, in your heart. There's a hole that needs to be filled. We can try to fill that with lots of other things. You can try. But, it, but unless you fulfill that with a relationship with, with, with God through Christ, it's not going to seem right. And so there's so many folks out there that are looking for something, that are searching for something, that are, that, are, that are feeling isolated. And it's because you were created and you were wired for a sense of belonging. We long to be a part of something greater than ourselves. For those of us that are a part of God's family, we have that secret. We understand that. For, for myself... I've always been a part of God's family. Even before I developed a relationship with Christ, I was raised in the family of God. I was taken to church. I was a part of a Sunday school. I went to vacation Bible school. We lived in a small community and attended a small rural church like there are many of those here in Ohio County. And, and so we had this group of people that we were connected to. If someone was sick or someone lost a loved one, people would come and bring food. People would come and check on you. If you, if you weren't able to attend church on a Sunday morning, somebody would call and check to make sure everything was okay. If something happened on the farm, if there was a storm and, 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 and a tree fell or a limb fell or, or something happened or something was damaged, the whole church community would gather at that person's house and help clean things up and, and restore things. It's those acts of service and that sense of community, that sense of belonging, belonging that's centered around the church is what I grew up with. I've been a part of that my entire life. The thing is, is that everybody kind of longs for that. And, and whenever somebody is invited to become a part of a group like that, it can become life-changing for them. You see, I, I grew up in that. It, it's, it's just part of my culture. It's part of who I am. It's part of how I was raised. But not everybody has, has that. Not everybody came from that culture. And, and so when we, when we are invited to be a part uh, of the family of God, it, it, it's, it becomes life-changing for so many. Every human being was created by God. Okay? Every human being was created by God, but not everyone is a child of God. You say, wait a minute, I don't, I don't understand. The only way that you get into God's family is by being born again into it. And some of you may be listening to that and say, well, that sounds confusing. It confused Nicodemus. Okay, Remember the message, Nick at night, when, when Nicodemus came at night and spoke with Jesus, and they had this conversation, and Jesus shared with him that you must be born again. 
And he was confused by that and, 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 and trying to understand what it means to be born again. Well, all of us, obviously, experienced a, a human uh, birth. You, you, became of your, you became part of your human family by your first birth. But you become part of God's family by your second birth. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says this. Praise be to God... Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is, de who is a deposit of, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. Jesus Christ came to this earth, taught us so many things, but He came to this earth for a specific purpose, to become a substitutionary sacrifice for our sins. Remember John the Baptist said, look, it's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When Jesus died on the cross, the, the weight of the sin, the sin of the world was poured out on him. He paid that price. He died on that cross. He was buried. But three days later, he rose from the dead. And through that resurrection, we have life. He made that connection. He made that bridge for us to have that relationship with the Father. When we trust in that, when we believe in that, when we accept that, we are then born into God's family. And then we become recipients of his inheritance. You know, anytime that somebody calls and says, hey, you've got an inheritance, I never got that call. Um, you, you ask the question, what, what exactly does that inheritance include? What is there? Well, the first thing that comes with being a, a child of God is we get to be with God forever. You know, we talk sometimes, and probably not enough, about what hell is. Hell is the worst part about hell is eternal separation from God. When you become one of God's children, when you accept His relationship that He offers, you become a child of God and you get to be with Him forever. The second thing that the inheritance includes in being a child of God is that we, we are completely changed to be like Christ. You know, it's always the truth that God accepts you just the way you are. You don't have to get cleaned up. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to try to get your life in order to come and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. He takes you just the way you are. But He won't leave you that way. He won't leave you that way. You, you can come just as you are. But as you begin to learn, as you begin to share in that relationship, as you begin to communicate with Him, as you begin to read His Word, study, and learn, you'll become more like His Son. He will shape and fashion and form you into the likeness of of Christ. Third thing we get in that inheritance, and my goodness, what a great one this is, to be freed from pain, death, and suffering. It, the time that we're living in right now is unprecedented. When I see the pain, when I see the, the, the death, the suffering, it, it's, a, it's around us all the time. What a wonderful time, to, to, what a wonderful place to look forward to, to, to look forward to light of eternity. You know, sometimes we, we get our, our ideas, and I'm, I'm guilty of this to an extent. When you work hard, we talk about retiring from our jobs. When we work hard, we get up every morning, we answer a bell at school, or you answer, answer a, a whistle at work, or you punch the clock or whatever. You start looking at your watch, you start looking at your calendar and think, man, there's going to be a day that, that I, I'm going to get to the end of this career and I'm going to clock out for the last time, I'm going to check out for the last time, and I'm going to be retired, and I'm going to... And then you start getting older. <laughs> and then your knees hurt. And then your back hurts. And then things don't work anymore. And you realize, hey, wait a minute. This body's wearing out. This is not going to last forever. Nope. Our earthly bodies don't last forever. We can't live in light of old age. We live in light of eternity where we get to be with God forever. We get to become like Jesus. And we're free from all pain, death, suffering. No more aches and pains. And then we get rewarded with and reassigned positions of service. I don't know what that's going to look like. But we're gonna we're gonna be enjoying our time with our heavenly Father for all eternity. And the last thing is we get to share in Christ's glory. We talked about that a little bit last week of what it means to to uh, uh, to enjoy that. 
and what an incredible inheritance. Uh, when we kind of get let life get us down a little bit here, we need to think about the inheritance that we have waiting for us in eternity. We are all far richer than we realize. Today we have a neat opportunity uh, at different times to, uh, to witness and celebrate baptism. And when we talk about being a part of God's family, that's a very important thing because baptism is not uh, an optional ritual. This is what baptism does, and, and I just want so that everybody may be tuning in or, or watching online that hasn't really been a part of, of, of living faith. Uh, baptism is not an optional ritual. It signifies your inclusion into God's family. It doesn't save you. There's no magic in our water. But it publicly announces to the world, I am not ashamed to be a part of God's family. So here's a question for you. Have you been baptized? Have you been baptized? You need to ask yourself that question because that, that question also needs to be preceded with, have I been saved? Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you, have you had your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Have you made that decision? Have you come to the understanding of what it means to be a child of God? If you have, if the answer to that question is yes, have you been baptized? If that answer is no, it's time to get wet. Okay? time to get wet. We, we want to talk to you about that. Reach out to us and we want to have a personal conversation with you about baptism. If you, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior but you've never been baptized, let's have that conversation. Jesus commanded the act of baptism, of this beautiful symbolism for all of his family. You see, in his Great Commission statement, and, and we find this uh, in, in Scripture, he tells us to go make disciples of all nations and to baptize them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism doesn't make you a member of God's family. Only faith in Christ does that. But baptism shows that you are a part of God's family. It's an outward expression of an inward change. The only biblical condition for baptism is that you believe. That you believe. That you've made that decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, Rick Warren says in his book over and over, and I've, I've shared this so many times, you may, think I, you, you may have thought I'd come up with this, but I didn't. I'll give Rick credit. You're called to belong and not just believe. You're called to belong and not just believe. Folks, it's not enough to come to a revival or come to a meeting or come some Sunday morning and say, you know, I want to put my faith in Christ, I'm going to get baptized, and I'm out. Okay? No, that is not the way this works. You are called to be a part of something greater than yourself. You're, you're called to be a part of a family. A, even in the perfect, sinless environment of Eden, God said, and I, 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 I quote this a lot because it's very important, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. We are created for community. We are fashioned for fellowship and formed for a family. We can't fulfill God's purposes for our lives on our own do that by ourselves. You see, your relationship with Christ is personal. We talk about that a lot, a personal relationship with Christ. But God never intends it to be private. He never intends it to be private where we just kind of hide that and say, well, I didn't know. <laughs> this is not a good thing. It's not a good thing when somebody says, you know, I had no idea you were a Christian. I had no idea you went to church. I had no idea you were a believer. That should not be the case. If you, if you are interacting with another believer, and they have no idea that you're a believer, you need to think about how your life's going. In God's family, you're connected to every other believer, and we, we will belong to each other for all eternity. Romans 12, 5 says, So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Life is meant to be shared. God intends for us to experience life together. That shared experience is called fellowship. You've heard me say this a lot. We've watered that down so much. We've watered it down so much. The, 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 the biblical meaning of fellowship has, has kind of uh, taken on casual conversation, socializing, food folks, and fun. Okay, And, and that's kind of what it looks like so many times. But the, the question, where do you fellowship, means where do you attend church? It's more than that. Uh, it's more than that. When we say stay after for fellowship, uh, well, that's why at 9.30 uh, on a regular, when, when times are regular here at Living Faith, uh, we have our time between our 8.30 and our 11 o'clock service at 9.30. We call that donut time. 
uh, that's donut time because that's a time to eat and, and have casual conversation and, and get to know folks. It's really not true fellowship because true fellowship is so much more. Real fellowship is so much more than showing up to services. Real fellowship is experiencing life together. This is the heart and soul of the small group ministry here at Living Faith. When we chose to stop meeting in person in large gatherings because of COVID-19, the heart and soul of Living Faith continued right on. Why? Because we are a church of small groups. And those, those folks are family. They are family, and they continued right on meeting. Everyone needs to be a part of a small group, and, and that's true now more than ever. Our small groups are the places where we one another, one another, okay? That passage of Scripture that talks about loving one another and caring for one another, all those things, that's where we do those one another commands is within our small groups. It's where we live out being a Christian. Real fellowship has to be cultivated by the Holy Spirit. Folks, this is not anything like, uh, I remember one of the things I used to hate because I'm not very athletic, and so when we would, when we were in middle school especially, when we would choose two captains for the softball team, and then we would pick teams, uh, it'd be like somebody's got to take him. He's left-handed and he can't hit the ball, but somebody's got to put this guy on it. We can't pick small groups like that. Okay, the Holy Spirit has to be involved. Uh, God moves in our hearts and He connects us together. We just have to participate in opportunities. We have to attend a class. We have to do. We have to participate in a Bible study. We have to do things where we begin to build relationships, where we begin to, to learn each other, and then we can become connected to a small group. It has to be cultivated by the Holy Spirit. I can't make it happen. You can't just make it happen. God has to make that happen. Experiencing real fellowship helps us to understand how God wants us to function. Sometimes we think we want to be independent, but God intends us to be interdependent on each other, but dependent upon Him. It's the struggle with churches and small communities. This is, this is the struggle with rural church and rural church growth. Uh, I grew up in a small church. I've pastored small churches. I've been a part. But what tends to happen with small churches is the church itself tends to function as a small group. Everybody knows everyone, and everyone functions together. And that works as long as the numbers are small. If there's a sickness or a death in someone's family, everyone takes food. If you've only got 40 or 50 people in a church, that works out real good. But if you've got two or 300, that's too much food. That's too much to keep up with. It's too much to, it's too much to, 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 to take on. Living faith is a church of small groups. There's more than one. Okay, There's more than one. If there is someone sick or there's another event, the entire church body doesn't have to be there and doesn't need to react. But the individual small group, that's where we want another one another. It's how we minister to those needs. So today I'm going to close with three simple questions. Number one, do you believe? Have you put your trust and faith in Christ? Because if you're going to be a part of God's family, that's where it starts. You have to be saved. And if, you, if you've been saved, if you said yes to that question, but you've never been baptized? Second question, have you been baptized? Okay. Third question is so important, I'm going to ask it twice. Where do you belong? Where do you belong? What group are you a part of? And that question just asks you, are you plugged into a small group? So think about those three things. Am I a believer? Have I been baptized? And who's my group? Who are my people? Who am I one anothering one another? Where is that happening? Where is that taking place? If, it, if, it, if you don't have that, you need to get plugged in. It's time. Father, we thank you so much uh, for loving us. We thank you so much for creating us. And most importantly, Father, we thank you so much that you have designed us and wired us to be a part of a family. Father, what, a, what an incredible opportunity to be to be a part of a church family. This Today, Father, I, I just want to, to pray. Maybe there's somebody there uh, that's watching today that has never said yes to the relationship that you offer. They can't answer yes to the question, have I been saved? Father, maybe today is that day of salvation for them. Now is that moment that they're reaching out and praying that prayer that they, that they admit that they're a sinner, but they believe that Jesus Christ came to this world, died on the cross, was buried, and three days later rose from the dead victory over death. They're going to put their trust and their faith in Him and ask Him to save. 
The Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe somebody's doing that right now. Father, I pray that, that you'll just come into their heart. Maybe, Father, there's someone that has said yes to that relationship, but they've done it in the, in, the, in the quietness of their home. Nobody else knows. And today, the Holy Spirit has come on their heart and has convicted them that they don't need to be ashamed of Christ. They don't need to be ashamed of their relationship with you. They need to tell the world, and we tell the world through baptism, and they need to get on the phone. They need to reach out. They need to call. They need to tell somebody, I need to be baptized. They need to answer that question, have I been saved? Have I been baptized? third thing this morning, Father, is they, is they search their heart. What group are they a part of? If tragedy struck their home, who would respond? Who would bring food? Who would call? Who would come? Who would hold their hand? Who would be there with them? Who would walk them through? Father, we need to ask those questions because you have called us to be a part of your family, your body of believers. And so, Father, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would just move in people's hearts and help us to move in that direction to have that relationship to tell the world about it and to be a functioning part of your family in a small group. Father, I just pray for this and I pray for our, our church family and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, accepted Christ into your heart, we want to know that. If you if you need to be baptized, if you're saying, I, I, don't, I need to talk more about this, I need more information, reach out to us. We'd love to have that conversation with you. And if you're still trying to figure out, I know it's a little more difficult right now because all of our small groups are still meeting somewhat online and they're meeting in, in other, other locations. But reach out to, uh, to, to Pastor Nathan. Nathan Phelps is the one who heads up our uh, small group ministry and oversees that. And reach out to me, reach out to Josh, Adam, Steve, any of us, Tim. Uh, we will be more than happy to help move you in a direction to at least attend a meeting or be a part and begin to learn what it means to be a part of the family of God in the small group ministry here at Living Faith. You guys stay dry, take care, have a great week, and we'll see you.